Welcome to In Our Own Defense Podcast. We're your host, Attorney A.D. Winters, founder and managing attorney of VeteransDefender.com, and Dr. Dolores Tarver, licensed psychologist. For more information about our show, find us on social media at In Our Own Defense, uh, on social media at Facebook and Instagram, and you check out our new YouTube channel. Just click the subscribe button or email us at inourowndefense at gmail.com. We've had a four-part series uh, that we've been working with uh, on empowerment, employment, economics in the 2020 election. And we had um, this very talented um, Trey Baker. He's the director of African-American engagement for the Biden-Harris 2020 uh, presidential campaign. He's been discussing these issues with us. Uh, he's come on the show uh, three times and we're getting him to come back for a fourth time. Uh, so Dr. Tarver, how have you been? I have been amazing, Attorney Winters. How about you? Oh, I've been well. Uh, <clears throat> we're, we are, you know, still reeling uh, from a while ago when um, we heard the news that we lost Associate Justice uh, Ruth Bader uh, Ginsburg. And, and I'm uh, really concerned um, that in that releasing of a statement that um, Senate Majority Leader uh, McConnell start talking about her replacement and, and we're still just waiting to try to celebrate her life. Uh, so one of the, the things that I'm concerned is that we need to understand what's all involved with this, this election. You know, why is it important? Do the people know why it's important? I've seen a lot of good energy from the sororities and the Greek uh, Panhellenic kind of uh, community. Uh, talking about it, but what are we doing to articulate to the everyday? What does this election mean to the everyday American? What does this mean to somebody who's facing stress of loss of job, facing stress of uh, uh, ankle waiting uh, debt from student loans and, and credit card debt? What are we doing to articulate the import of this election? What is on the line? What are you seeing and what are you hearing that's on the line for this election? I think definitely people are wanting to deal with the right here and the right now. What does that mean for me right now? And so it has been challenging, I will say, here to get people to be necessarily invested in the election, invested in completing the census, because they are concerned about these other challenges and, and they don't necessarily see the connection between them two. Um, and so I, I, I think for a lot of people, there's a bit of mis- um, maybe misunderstanding or just a lack of general knowledge about things like the census and what happens when a Supreme Court justice dies and, and if that person is replaced during so close to an election and what that means versus waiting until election is completed. I, because people, I think, are just dealing with so much of their own distress that they're not necessarily as connected. And I know for a lot of people when they are overwhelmed, they shut everything else out. And so I think people are turning off the news. They're not necessarily um, checking on websites to find out about how these things matter. They're not going to a, a, a JoeBiden.com uh, website to check on the issues. They are just thinking about, okay, how am I going to pay rent for this month? How am I going to make payroll for my employees? How am I going to stop my business from going under? How am I going to make sure that when my kids have to go back to school on Monday, they don't get sick and then the whole family be out and then we can't work and we won't be able to really make ends meet. So I, I think that's the challenges that I'm seeing. Well, I, I definitely can appreciate that. And I think we're, we're lucky enough to have uh, an extremely talented uh, uh, young man with us today. Uh, he, uh, the director of African-American engagement, attorney Trey Baker, uh, he's the director of African-American engagement for the Biden-Harris uh, 2020 campaign. He's a self-described Mississippian, Grenadian, uh, Tougaloo and Bowtie aficionado. Want to help me welcome back to the show, Dr. Tarver. Welcome back to the show again for the fourth time. In this four-part <laughs> series. Uh, Mr. Baker, so thank you so much for coming here uh, out of your and The funniest thing is you always introduce me with that, and I uh, all four shows I'm yet to wear a bow tie. So people are going to think I'm lying here in a minute. Um, but I, I suggest they, they check my, you know, check my bow tie game out. It's legendary. Trey underscore Baker on Twitter. You see all you, all you can handle. All right. Well, as a, as a uh, bow tie aficionado of about 300 bow ties myself, I definitely – uh, I appreciate your, your bow tie game. 
So I would confirm it. Um, you know, we're, we're lucky enough to have you here. Dr. Tarver and I were just discussing, uh, we're just trying to understand what is this 2020 election all about? Like, really, what is it all about? And so some of the things that we're, we're concerned about uh, is why is it important to people? Why is the, why is the, cons why is the census important? What, what, what does all of this mean and why does that matter uh, to the everyday individual? So uh, f first, answering your question on this 2020 election from the presidential side, this, this election is about a referendum on Donald Trump. This is about four years of failed leadership, four years of uh, leaving our country out there to dry, four years of, of looking the other way and, and trying to get us to look the other way with nonsense and, and circus antics and all kinds of other tomfoolery. Um, and, and we just don't have time for that uh, in this moment. We've had, it, it's close, it's, we're coming up on 200,000 people to have died from COVID-19. Uh, and Donald Trump has failed us in, in that regard. Uh, we're coming up on people who have ongoing, even if you survive, you know, you, you've got millions and millions of people who have gotten COVID-19 and will have health care uh, issues from, from here on out. I mean, you just don't get uh, a virus that's this serious that leads to pneumonia, that leads to having you know spotty, uh, spotty lung capacity, and then go back to normal. Like those, those things are still going to pull down your your entire system, and you'll have problems going forward. So you've got a, a nation of sick people, a nation of people dying, and all of that has led to a, a, a severe downturn in the economy. People are still out here saying Donald Trump is good on, on the economy because he was on a reality show uh, some, some years ago pretending to be rich. Uh, but I, I think the, the, the issue is more, more discreet than that. It, it's, hey, he's not good on the economy because he doesn't understand the impact that other things, including a pandemic, have on the economy. Had he done anything to uh, tamp down this uh, this pandemic, the way that other leaders, such as you know the the governor of New York, uh, other Democratic leaders, the governor of Washington State, have all gone out here and, and been leaders along with Joe Biden and Kamala Harris from day one on on PPE, on making sure that we socially distance, uh, on, on sh kind of shutting down these cities to make sure that people don't come out and get sick, and so uh, this is a referendum on Donald Trump. He has failed us. Uh, he's not someone our kids can be proud of. He's he's not competent to do the job. He's not able to do it, and we need somebody in this moment who's who's serious, who can who can do the job. I mean, you you look at um, look at cities and towns. Uh, when I was the city manager of Grenada, Mississippi, had I acted like Donald Trump, they would have fired me on day one. Um, and, and I think it's time for us to us to fire him for for acting out and being incompetent. Uh, what I will say on the census is that the census is vitally important. It is something that we have to do. We must we must be counted because uh, when you're counted by the census, it dictates the resources that you'll have in your city. So uh, you'll have in your town, you'll have in your state. Uh, it dictates the number of congressional representatives that you'll have in 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 a place like Mississippi, who at one point had you know, six members of the House of Representatives along with their two senators. Uh, now we're down to four uh, because of, of the lack of population. And so uh, some of some of that could be the the undercount and, and a lot of that is flight away from the state. Uh, but uh, it's important because the more people you have, the more resources you have access to. And if you're coming in at a rate of 60, 70 percent filling out the census, then your community is going to lose out because of that. And so ultimately, uh, as people draw lines uh, for for races, when when legislatures draw these lines, you know, you're, you're drawing these lines around the, the number of people who need to be in that district. And um, it, it's so important that that we be counted, uh, that we be able to get the resources that our communities need. Um, because while uh, African-American communities are the, the lowest 
uh, counts in many places like Mississippi. They're the communities that need the resources most. The the Madison, Mississippi's and the Ridgelands and the um, and the the Pearls. They're they're doing pretty good. They've got a good tax base and other things. But you look at places in the Mississippi Delta, uh, in that very northeast section of Mississippi, uh, and and they need it the most and have the most severe undercount. And that is it's heartbreaking because uh, I know they're great people in both of those communities that you just articulated and uh, and and we've got to understand the seriousness of it. Uh, the deadline is September the thirtieth. If, if you don't understand that, you've got to get out and understand get get counted. It takes minutes to be counted, and it has a ten year effect on your life. Um, uh, Dr. Tarver. You know, as we're talking about the importance of the census, I definitely want to talk about the just actually getting out to vote. Uh, and I, I know that you have alluded to this in some of the um, previous episodes that, that you've been on with us, but there are certain groups of people who are less likely to get out and vote. Um, they may be less likely to get out and vote because of transportation issues. They may be less likely to get out and vote because they're dealing with financial stress. And so they're trying to find employment and they may be working in jobs that it may be difficult for them to be able to even get time away to be able to go and vote. Uh, we definitely know that there has been a debacle when it comes to voting in some states. Um, just this past election in Georgia was a hot mess with us trying to make sure that that voters actually were able to vote, ballots got counted, the system went down, it was terrible. Um, and, and then there are these uh, dynamics of you have people in place and there's some concern about whether or not they're doing ethical things, changing those lines. So I go to the voting poll and, and figure out like, oh wait, I'm not even voting here anymore or I've been dropped altogether. Not to mention this pandemic, and so now I'm concerned about actually getting out to vote. And the narrative that is being cast is that these mail-in votes are not necessarily going to be counted or could be fraudulent. And so people have a lot of understandable concerns about getting out. But from your perspective, what are some of the things that you're seeing that are stopping people, one, from actually voting? And then two, what can we do to empower people to despite all of those things I've listed, and I'm sure you have many more, to still get out and vote, even if there are a lot of challenges associated with it? I think uh, the first thing, that's a, that's a really good question, is that um, I, I don't think, you know, sometimes when we start talking about voting, we start getting, getting down on people for, um, for not or criticizing certain groups, partic particularly black males get it you know, every election season, like, oh, if they had gone out and voted. I think what we have to look at is the circumstances by which people aren't voting. You look at a broken criminal justice system that's locking up more black black men uh, than anything and tearing families apart. You look at a uh, an economy that's not built for uh, the worker. You got low, low minimum wages. You got um, uh, opportunities that don't, uh, really give black men and others the opportunity to provide for their families. You have a, a system of policing out here that, you know, it's, it seems like sometimes it's just killing a black man a day. Uh, every time we, we, we stand up, uh, there's, there, there's another one of us falling. So you look at a person who's in the midst of that. You look at a person who's, you know, brother, sister, cousin is dying from COVID uh, because we have, uh, you know, a higher chance because of just systemic issues of systemic racism. And you just pile all that on, on top of them. And, you know, it's understandable that that person may or may not care about anything, um, much less voting is, hey, I'm looking at my environment. I'm looking at these streets. I'm, pe I'm looking at people dying in the streets, whether it's by the hands of each other or, a, or the hands of a cop. I'm looking at you know, X, Y, and Z, other economic issue that's going on, me not being able to be a, get a job. And the system isn't working uh, for so many people. Uh, and so, you know, we have to understand the why in that. But then we have to get a hold of the how 
do we get them to to then move? And and that's by talking directly to people and speaking to them where they are, uh, speaking to them about those underlying issues of 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 the kitchen table stuff, putting food on the table, taking care of your kids, making sure that if they if they're sick, they can get health care, um, and, and speaking to people in a way that that isn't above them and isn't pretentious and isn't um, and isn't something that's you know over the top. And that's why I enjoy working for Joe Biden because he's a regular guy, despite the Secret Service detail and everything else that that goes along with being a, a former Vice President of the United States. Uh, he's still you know Scranton Joe. And Scranton Joe connects with, you know, Greenwood Rick, uh, who are, you know, basically the, the same kind of guy. And so, I mean, that's the, you, you have to look at that profile first. And and, and, I, and I do want to, you know, and I, I am intentionally kind of explaining this out in steps because I think it's so important. Uh, but, but once you identify those things and identify what's moving people then you have to have policy positions that that are going to pull them in and so what are you doing what are you actually doing for me how how am i going to benefit from this and when when you say to somebody hey if you're trying to buy a house you'll immediately get you know fifteen thousand of that you know to come back to you in a in, a, in your taxes um they they get that uh you, if you go to an HBCU and you're not making more than one hundred twenty-five thousand dollars, you can get all that, you know, all that released, all, all that, all that debt is gone. Uh, if you tell people that we're going to decriminalize marijuana and expunge the records of those with marijuana convictions, oh, okay, I, I get that. And and so um, having to go to the people and explain to them where they are, what's happening. That's why we have programs on the campaign like Shop Talk. Uh, where we we have blackmail engagement, where we're talking to some celebrities on the national level, however we're doing it at the state level and talking to local elected officials, and we're doing it at the local levels and, and just talking to guys who are actually at the shop. Uh, and so that that's a program that we do. We do sister to sister talks where we talk with the black women. I will say the sisters are the bedrock of the Democratic Party. They you know they came out and voted. <laughs> almost 100% for the Democrat in the last election. The problem we have is with black men uh, who voted 13% uh, for Donald Trump. And so I think um, to, to get to the heart of your question, uh, it's so important because um, elections have consequences. We're about to see right now that, that things that we take for granted, uh, whether it's um, the 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 doctrine of of separate but equal being being thrown away and and actually segregating schools or if you look at the the voting rights act and uh the 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 repealing of section five of the voting rights act uh in the shelby case uh which, which took out the preclearance which is the thing that essentially protects uh against what what dr tarver was talking about earlier those lines in georgia only became possible because the Supreme Court gutted Section 5 of, of the Voting Rights Act. Then the state of Georgia, if they want to take away um, uh, voting machines in, in black districts, they don't have to get preclearance from the Department of Justice anymore. They can just do it. And so that's a direct cause and effect. Otherwise, if they had to, you know, submit preclearance, the Department of Justice would have been flagged to them doing that and those long six and eight hour lines wouldn't exist in the state of Georgia. And so that's that's why is this is so important because there, there are direct cause and effect consequences. People died in this country because Donald Trump won that election in 2016. That's that's straight away, that's simple. Um, it's, it's, it's tragic, but it's simple is that you know, you, you elect somebody who's not prepared, competent to do the job, and tragedy will happen. Absolutely. I, I, I think there is just, you articulate it really well, a lack of understanding of some of those things that you just mentioned. Um, Georgia got hit kind of back to back uh, because we really felt um, like the, govern the gubernatorial election was um, also not done in, a, in an adequate manner where you have somebody who is serving in a position that seems like it would be in direct 
um, violation of running for another position. And, and that was an issue that wasn't addressed. The, the uh, people being purged off the polls uh, was, was a huge issue here. So you're absolutely right. If people aren't aware of, of their rights or what's going on, uh, then they don't know that there's consequences to these choices and these decisions. So I appreciate you expounded on that. Uh, Attorney Winters? Yeah, I, I, I served as assistant attorney general for 12 years in Louisiana, and, and some of this stuff is, is alarming. When I was in, uh, went back to my LLM programs, I, I became an election protector. I went out, and, and, and that last uh, election in 2016, a lot of us went out, um, and we worked in Central Florida, uh, Florida, Orlando, and went to Daytona. We knew it was going to be a hotbed. We knew it was going to be a bunch of issues. Uh, what we noticed is that uh, the Gen Z, uh, the students, didn't know that they needed to transfer their, their vote from New York, a bunch of New Yorkers, a bunch of DCs that were down at Bethune-Cookman. And that's the campus I worked the election right there uh, from election protectorate standpoint to make sure they had a chance to get a provisional vote, uh, anything to be able to vote that day. Um, what are you all doing uh, to ensure that this, that despite all of the other attempts at disenfranchisement, that you're getting the word to educate these millennials and the Gen X, uh, Zs, uh, the Gen Zs on what they need to do to vote, what they need to do to register, if there's still time left to register in their place, what they need to do to vote early to eliminate these lines. Uh, what are some of the, the, the energies that you all are putting forth in the campaign? Uh, just a couple of days ago, we celebrated uh, National Black Voter Day, and uh, we we started by doing a number of trainings. Uh, Senator Harris uh, did a, uh, you'll be seeing a, a interview with her on um, uh, September 21st um, to talk about uh, just voting in general, uh, but you'll also see uh, efforts from us across the board to bring in young people and give them trainings, uh, just let, letting them know how uh, how this all works. Because if you're a low propensity voter, uh, you're also going to be easily frustrated by the process. And whether it's, you know, vote by mail, vote early, or anything else, I think it's a, um, it's something where we we see that there's no one way this year is not about election day it's not about november 3rd it's about an election season uh they've already started voting in uh, north carolina they've already started voting in virginia they've already started voting in in minnesota so the election is on uh we're we're out here banking votes right now um and and so in some places especially in our community um we for good reason don't don't trust uh various things in this world and one of them is uh mail-in voting we we fought and died and bled and sweat so that we can go to go to that that poll go to that ballot box pull that lever or put that card in or punch that hole in you know whatever it is and we want to see our, our ballots go in the box and so uh to the extent that that you know some of that is is actually uh rightfully uh, true that we shouldn't trust it. You look at a state like North Carolina, and we've already seen that uh, two times as many black votes are coming back um, as as disregarded for having some some kind of um, you know either signature not on the right place or, or envelope not closed. Uh, and so more than more than twice those mail in ballots are coming back in black communities than they are in white communities. Um, and so we're encouraging folks to vote safely and in person and vote early. Uh, and so what we need people to do, and, and this is just in general, uh, is to make a voting plan. Understand when to vote in your state. Understand if you have early voting and take advantage of it. Understand what the mail-in uh, voting rules are, where you have to sign across the envelope, uh, because if you don't do it, then your, your vote won't count. Um, and in some states, you have the, the possibility of being able to remedy it. In some states, it just gets thrown out. So uh, you have to look for that information in your state. I would suggest that people go to IWillVote.com 
IWillVote.com, uh, and you're you're able to uh, look up and um, see whether or not you're you're registered to vote. You can get registered to vote. You can find out your polling places by going to IWillVote.com, and you can also um, you know j just get clarification about any number of things uh, in, involved with voting. So I would suggest that to people as a as a first step because that, that can send you everywhere you need to go. Uh, that's something that's endorsed by the Biden campaign about the Democratic National Committee. Uh, so so we think that's that that's a good place for people to start off and go. Uh, and I think beyond that though, uh, we have to um, we have to continue to uh, urge and 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 thrust upon our young people, just what it means um, and the value of it and, and, and what our community has gone through to be able to do it. Uh, one thing that somebody suggested to me was that uh, voting in their community, in their local community, used to basically be a holiday uh, where the schools were out on election day. And so they would walk from their house uh, with their mother uh, to the polls and, and, and watch her vote. And so that was all they knew. And so I think that that's, you know, that good habit forming early in the game, this is why you should be uh, civically engaged it is ridiculously important. And so we should be good shepherds of that uh, by, by uh, making sure that we're setting the right example, that we're going to vote, that we're voting early, that we're voting in every election that matters from dog catcher all the way up to president. And, and I think uh, some of that will, will be helpful in bringing along the other people. But we're going to do everything in between, though, uh, Dr. Tarver, Attorney Winters. We're going to put Jeezy on the shop talk. And we're going to have uh, <laughs> Cardi B come and, uh, come and endorse Joe Biden. We're going to have, um, you know, any number of other things. Anthony Hamilton just performed on something for us. And so we're going to meet people where they are and make sure folks are excited and enthused. It's not just about the, the nuts and bolts of it. Sometimes, it's, you know, you got to do the, the, the bells and whistles. And uh, that's what we're going to do because we can't leave anything on the table. We, we're not taking a single vote for granted. And um, we think that ultimately Joe Biden and Kamala Harris are the best ticket to on November 3rd, be able to uh, restore the soul of this nation and, and ultimately help us to build back better. You know, I think that, uh, I think that was a wonderful uh, uh, way to articulate what, what we're all trying to, uh, to get out of it. How can we get people to vote? What can people do to uh, um, uh, volunteer to help uh, this campaign, help this effort? How, how can people help as far as volunteering? People can uh, do one thing. They can go to JoeBiden.com, uh, go to JoeBiden.com uh, to get particularly involved in, in my program. You'd go to JoeBiden.com slash coalitions. Uh, that's JoeBiden.com slash coalitions. And uh, once you get to the coalitions page, you can choose to involve yourself with any number of coalitions, uh, African-Americans for Biden, uh, Totos Con Biden, which is our Latino program, uh, AAPIs, uh, uh, um, Asian-American Pacific Islanders for, for Biden, and any number of things in between. Uh, so that would be the, the, the first step to getting involved. If, if your listeners text uh, AFAM, that's A-F-A-M, that's AFAM, A-F-A-M to 30330, uh, they will immediately get a response from us and that immediately kicks to my program. And so you'll start to get the newsletter, uh, The Dose of Joe from the uh, African American Engagement Program. And then that's the gateway to bringing you into the rest of the program. So seeing the shop talks, seeing the Make It Happen Mondays, which is our small business uh, engagement program, seeing the sister to sister talks, uh, that all will come with with texting FM to three zero three three zero, and uh, that that's your that's your gateway, and then we'll we'll get you going from there. If people are interested in in text banking, phone banking, uh, if they're interested in uh, the the limited canvassing uh, that's going to be available at some point, um, they can they can access all of that uh, by texting FM to three zero three three zero. So after texting AFAM 30330 um, and, and they get engaged like that, 
Uh, one of the other things that I know people are really excited about is supporting a campaign financially. So, uh -huh. uh, you know, I'm going to challenge, you know, uh, we're both capital men. Uh, so I'm going to challenge other capital men, uh, you know, <laughs> I'm going to challenge other capital men to follow me by, you know, our founding year is 1911. Um, I'm going to challenge uh, all Greek men, but, but uh, capital men of 1911, I'm going to donate 1911 times 10. And I'm challenging anybody else to do it. So I'm going to donate uh, uh, one hundred ninety one dollars and ten cent i'm going to keep trying to do it but i'm going to challenge other people to do it i just got a text from someone saying that they would do it as well so that's exciting uh so that's two uh one uh, 91 tens uh so uh we're going to keep challenging people so they can do that right here on this website right joebiden.com first page and i go to click other and then i just put in the amount that i want to the right amount that i want to do here one nine one dot one oh uh and uh and i got this donate with apple pay and i got it done and i'm challenging you others to come back and do it too you can do whatever you want apple pay paypal pops up visa mastercard american express uh whatever whatever you want to do uh and i think that that's really important and you know having a uh, we haven't really talked about it, but having a uh, a member of a Black Greek letter organization on the ticket in Senator Kamala Harris, having an HBCU grad on the ticket uh, is, is doing wonders for that type of grassroots fundraising. Uh, you've got AKAs around the, the country who are doing just what you just did, donating 1908, uh, no, donating, a, you know, 100 ninety dollars and eighty cents you know whatever the case is and um it is uh so important and such a such a um we have to not only be involved in in the marching in the um the uh, working, being the workhorses of, of the campaign, we have to also be involved in the financial aspect of it, whether that's raising, whether that's black vendors, whether that's uh, in, engaging in what I like to call the black campaign economy um, by, you know, working with, with your local small businesses, going to your barbershops, bringing a crowd in there that, that's going to um, gonna benefit and add to that community, that community's economy. Um, so, uh, the, the Biden campaign is, is a, is a strong advocate of that black campaign economy and has hired black vendors, uh, particularly our, our, our black paid media, um, company is black owned. Uh, we work with black owned, um, radio stations, black owned newspapers, uh, and, and black owned is, 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 is very, I'm saying that very specifically because uh, we also deal with black content providers, um, but it's important for us to make sure that, you know, we are owning uh, our content. And then for those folks who are owning our content, uh, who are black, making sure that they get to participate and they get to put out the message. Uh, the, the dollar that goes into advertising on black media, uh, whether that's radio, whether that's television, whether it's, it's shows like yours, uh, as you as you continue to grow, and as you have uh, folks who are uh, coming on as, as sponsors uh, of your program, it's important that campaigns engage with that they have to engage with you uh, on that on that financial level, uh, because you have to continue to be able to be here to provide good content to people. And you have to do that by having resources made available to you. And if the campaign is going to be spent, you know, doing a millions and millions of dollars in spend um, out to your mainstream media, uh, that dollar will go a whole lot farther with somebody who's got 100,000 or so followers who are tuned in every night to the podcast or tuned in to the Instagram live or tuned in to the Facebook live. So we're looking at all of those methodologies. Uh, I just did an interview uh, similar to this on um, uh, Black with No Chaser. I've known those guys from Black with No Chaser for years. Uh, some of them went to Tougaloo with me. 
Uh, they were party promoters at one point. They did some other things, and now they're on the media side and doing a doing a wonderful job. But we're looking at folks like that who do an Instagram live show or a Facebook live show, uh, and we're going on. We're doing earned media opportunities like this, but also we're engaging with them on the paid media side. Um, and so we're serious about it. We have people here who are serious about it, and uh, we, we will continue to be serious about it, um, not only through November 3rd, but in a Biden-Harris administration, we'll understand the, the importance and the power of black media, and uh, we will uh, make sure that we are participating at the highest level. No, I think that is that is spot on, uh, and we really appreciate you. you. You know, we couldn't be more thrilled uh, that somebody as talented as you, uh, you know, we see you as young <laughs> a lot of times because you, but you've done so much in your little time on earth. Uh, but we're so impressed with you and we're so thankful for you. Uh, we're thankful really for your whole family. Your father uh, left an incredible legacy in, in Grenada as the leader of the school for so many years as the principal uh, at Grenada High. Your mother being a stalwart leader in the community. Your sister has been great, uh, just great people. Um, and, and, and so we're lucky to have you on this show to take out the time of your extremely busy schedule uh, to do this with us uh, on all of these episodes that you took out the time to do. And I'll let Dr. Tarver give us some closing words. Thank you, Attorney Winters. Uh, echo the sentiments. Uh, so much appreciate you, Attorney Baker, for taking out the time. Know that you were managing a lot of different things today and, and still made time for us because you made a commitment to do this. And we, we appreciate um, you being a man of your word. And we know that that means you're working for someone who is a, a, a man of his. Uh, so I want to just kind of summarize a few things that I think is important for our listeners to understand. One of the things that really stood out to me was that you talked about a voting plan. And I think so much of the time we don't have plans for things. We just kind of expect that they magically are going to happen. But as we talk about all of these barriers to people getting out to vote, completing the census, and being able to take an active part in things, a plan helps do that. So yes, understanding that mail-in ballot rules, right? So that we don't have extraneous marks on the ballot, that we sign it in the appropriate place, that we follow though, and they give us a nice checklist on there to follow, but making sure we're doing that. For our people that have difficulty reading, having somebody that's there that can help and assist you with that process. Um, you also gave us some information about being able to know if we're still registered because a lot of times people don't know their names have been purged for various different reasons. Iwillvote.com. So I want to highlight that for our, our listeners as well. Iwillvote.com. Um, I just text AFAM to 30330, got an immediate response, as you said, got me connected. Um, took all of a uh, minute for all of that to happen to get all that good access. So I think that's important. Want to definitely highlight JoeBiden.com that has all of the different platforms on there. Um, Build Back Better being that hallmark, but also breaks down all of these different areas we've been talking about. Small businesses, women, LGBTQ, like we, you all have really just, there's a comprehensive list of things and I think it's important for people to be informed and not just get these memes off of social media and not necessarily know accurate information. So you all have made it really easy for people to see the platform and to be able to understand some of these issues. I also appreciate talking to people about how they can get involved because I do think a lot of people want to get involved. They're just not sure how to do that. And so we're going to make sure that people do go to that um, JoeBiden.com and coalitions so that they can be able to access all of the ways that they can get connected. So thank you so much for this very comprehensive information. I know these have been long uh, days for you and to make time for us again, we are, are, are very appreciative um, and, and so grateful that you're continuing on the legacy that your family started and that you will continue that legacy on for a new generation. So appreciate you so much. And thank you. And, and uh, we're, we're so proud of both of y'all for everything. And I, and I really appreciate that shout out uh, to my family, um, to my, my father, especially. Uh, he, he was a, a stalwart in this community and uh, someone who I have lived um, you know, I, he, he died when I was seven and, um, 
but I, I've always had the good words of folks like you, um, you know, folks who, who were uh, may, maybe felt the, the, the bad end of the paddle uh, in, the, in the office. And, you know, to, to a person, everyone who comes up and, and says they, you know, they say, you know, Mr. Baker was, was really a disciplinarian and he, you know, he was, he was rough, but I get it now. Uh, I, I get it. And it's that, that work ethic, that thing that he brought that I, I aspire to. If I was, you know, half as good as him, you know, who knows where I would be. <laughs> so he is, uh, he is what I, what I aspire to be, um, you know, in this politics thing and in, in life in general, as a, as a man, as a black man, um, you know, to be strong and, and to be uh, someone who the community you know, 20 plus years after his death, uh, still uh, remembers and, and still holds in high esteem. So I wouldn't be here without uh, the, the legacy of John Baker Jr. Good deal. Well, thank you. Uh, we echo that uh, as well. The community of Grenada echoes it uh, decades. I remember uh, you had the privilege of going to be the uh, the keynote speaker at uh, my big brother and uncles and their uh, their class reunion, I think they were from the class of 80 or was it 70, whatever year it was, like their 40th or something. And they were, you know, the odds of their, your dad being their principal and now you're their, their city manager uh, was, was a blessing. But it, but it speaks to how people uh, uh, perceive you and understand you and appreciate your leadership for fighting for all Americans, all Grenadians and all Mississippians um, and, and, and it speaks to uh, Congressman uh, Thompson, uh, Benny, uh, believing in you, the city of Grenada believing in you, and now uh, Vice President, future President Biden believing in you. Uh, we have been so lucky to have you on our show discussing empowerment, employment, economics, and the 2020 election with Attorney Trey Baker as the Director of African American Engagement. And all you have to do is real simple, text AFAM to the number 3030 and I challenge all people to uh, to meet me at 1911 times 10 that's one hundred and ninety one dollars and ten cents and donate to the campaign today uh, this is in our own defense we're your host attorney Anthony D winners and Dr. Loris Tarver uh, and we we ask you to check us out on social media for more information about our podcast at Instagram Facebook like our new YouTube channel, subscribe to it, and we thank you so much and have a great day.